Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, welcome to Ascent Overseas Education Study in USA webinar. My name is Kamal Kant, and I'm Vice President Business Development at Ascent Overseas Education. Today, we thought uh, we'll focus on students in South India. There may be some who logged in from North India as well, and you're most welcome uh, to raise questions and uh, uh, listen to the presentations from two of the most popular universities in the USA. So we have colleagues uh, uh, from the uh, a university representation to deliver the presentations on both of them. Let me give you a quick introduction. Some of you have already visited our offices in Chennai or in Hyderabad. Yeah. Uh, but let me give you a quick introduction to what Ascent can do for you. And then I'll pass it on to the universities one at a time. So Ascent Overseas Education is one of India's leading overseas education consulting company and offers uh, free of charge services to all the students start to uh, starting from applications, be it ILTS coaching, uh, loans and scholarship assistance, visa assistance, which is the most prominent colorful sticker you need on your passport, and any forex or accommodation related assistance that you might need, or and pre-departure briefing, starting from telling you what to pack, what not to pack, and where you need to stay, and all other things. All these are important elements and aspects of uh, choosing to study abroad. So what we're focusing on at the moment is in terms of university selection process, which is usually the beginning and the very initial stage of selecting universities. Keeping in mind the current COVID-19 situation, a lot of students have not had the opportunity to meet us in the office, where normally universities would come and attend uh, the uh, web seminars in the office and uh, answer questions for the students. But we've tried to digitize it. Uh, Ascent is probably the only company uh, which has the option and a dedicated online uh, team to assist students uh, who want to digitally interact without visiting the office or possibly are not able to visit the office. So today's uh, program is uh, to take you through presentations for two universities, about 20 minutes each. What we'll do is at the end of first university presentation, Cleveland State University, we'll do a quick Q&A session. So all of you can probably see the Q&A box uh, on your tab at the bottom. Uh, you can put your questions there. Uh, keep typing your questions and I'll take them in sequence as and when uh, we need to raise the questions with the university representatives and then we'll try and answer them all. What we'll also do is after the second presentation, we will do a multiple uh, Q&A session to take care of both the uh, sessions, both the university questions and answers, and any general questions you might have about studying in the USA, anything Ascent can do for you, and several other things. So that's the plan of action uh, at the moment. So without much ado, let me introduce you to Mr. Andrew Yang, uh, for who Hello, everyone. a presentation on Cleveland State University, uh, followed by Julia Dunlick, uh, who will present on UMass Boston. So it's a good opportunity to get uh, a wide spectrum of universities and get to know your opportunities of studying further. Keep typing your questions and we'll make sure we answer all the questions at the end and we'll, we'll take it from there. So we're hoping to be operational at Ascent uh, from 1st of June in most of the offices. Just those of you who have not visited the office, we have the opportunity. These are a couple of pictures of the office where you can come and spend time. Uh, we'll of course take all the precautions that we can and we'll give you virtual tours of the universities that you wish to apply to, and then we'll take things from there. So those are the addresses, which we'll anyway focus in a bit at the end uh, to discuss more. Uh, without much uh, delay in uh, taking uh, good things forward, Andrew, over to you, if you want to share your screen and take, your, take us through the presentation on Cleveland State University. Perfect, thank you so much. Uh, and just as a note, uh, would you mind uh, giving me access to share the screen? Yes, yeah. Pritam, can you do thank that? You. It's done. Perfect. Uh, can everyone see this? Yes, we can, Andrew. Perfect. Well, first of all, I just want to say, you know, thank you all for joining this, this presentation. Um, as um, I think was uh, mentioned before, usually at this time, um, personally myself, I'm usually in, in India. Um, I feel like I live there most of the, of the year. And uh, it's unfortunate that I'm not able to meet you all in person, but this is a uh, as mentioned, a great resource for you to uh, get more insight into the university. Uh, as we look into, I would say, uh, more of a digital platform for a lot of universities just across the world, 
this is a great tool for you guys to sit in, uh, hear about, I guess, more about the universities, to know about entry requirements for those of you who might not have applied yet. Uh, and for all of you to know a little bit more about tuition costs, the breakdown in that. Uh, if you have any questions just about, you know, what's happening in the U.S., uh, you know, please feel free to also uh, type in the, in the chat box as well. So for this presentation, I've kind of broken down into an agenda of sorts into four main categories. Uh, one, I'm going to do an introduction about my university for any of you who might not be familiar with Cleveland State University. I hope that's no one here, but just for any of you guys to have more of an insight or an in-depth view. Uh, I'm going to cover some of the graduate programs that are STEM related. Um, STEM stands for Science, Technology, Engineering, Mathematics. So I'll do a little bit of a deep dive into some of the programs offered within our um, College of Engineering as well as our School of Business. Um, and then as mentioned, I'll cover tuition costs, scholarships, all of that, and then we'll open up for our Q&A sessions. Yeah. So for any of you who might not be too familiar with uh, uh, CSU, uh, we're located in Cleveland, uh, which is the second largest city in Ohio. Um, Ohio is a state. Andrew, sorry, can you, can you yeah. be a bit louder? Sorry. Oh, sorry. Can you hear me now? If you can, yeah. If you can. Yeah, thank you. Okay. Yeah, of course. Uh, yeah, if you can't hear me, just let me know. Yeah. Um, so there's 50 states in the United States, and uh, I'm, once again, a little bit biased, but I think the best state is obviously Ohio. Uh, so we're located, once again, as mentioned, in Cleveland. So our university population, uh, we have over 17,000 plus students. Within that large number of students, uh, we actually have 1,400 students that are actually international students, just like yourselves. Uh, this past spring, we actually welcomed over 240 students just from India alone. And that's one thing great that I know the faculty, the, the, the community really embraces um, our Indian students. And you kind of, uh, as during this presentation, I'll talk a little bit more about what all those resources entail. So within that 1,400 plus number of international students, uh, we actually have about 8% that are from India, uh, just like yourselves who made that journey from India overseas to the US. And um, trust me, they are loving their experiences on campus as well. So one of the things that I want to kind of quickly highlight is uh, what's listed on this uh, by the numbers uh, slide. So we're actually ranked number one in the, in the United States for increases in research expenditures. So essentially what that means is that uh, we've actually, uh, once again, number one, when it comes to access for our students for uh, research components. So whether you're a graduate student and you're looking to either pursue some research or even if you're not, just having access to all those opportunities are some things that are really crucial. As you look to graduate you know, two years on the road, that's what employers are looking for. Um, not just what kind of classes you've taken, what are your grades, uh, that's maybe what the higher metrics were in the past, but right now it's all about what kind of experiences do you have? Uh, what was your work experience like in India? What were your uh, work experiences or research experiences like in the United States? Those are all components that geared uh, towards helping you find those lucrative positions. Um, so these um, are some top uh, places uh, that a lot of students either have found employment or also looking to target. You can find them in the bottom left component. So uh, Cleveland State uh, itself, uh, we're actually home to about eight Fortune 500 companies. The state of Ohio is actually uh, home to over 27 Fortune 500 companies. And this just kind of gives you a little bit of a glimpse into all the wonderful opportunities that you will actually be able to have access to um, in Ohio as well as in Cleveland. Uh, if any of you are familiar with you know, sports or music, uh, I'm a big sports guy myself. Uh, if you know basketball, LeBron James, uh, he used to play for the Cleveland Cavaliers, which is actually one of the professional NBA teams. So we have lots of professional sports in Cleveland, and there's a reason why it's just such a robust as well as very diverse city. Uh, if you like music, you know, we have the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame that's actually situated in Cleveland. So lots of, um, I guess, access for students, not just from a great academic standpoint, but also for the arts, the cultures, and, um, and sports as well. So besides tuition, um, which is something that is a huge factor that I know really determines uh, where a student goes, another, uh, I would say, important criteria for you, whether you're an undergraduate student or a graduate student to think about, is also the cost of living. So it's not just tuition that obviously you have to pay for, it's also you know, housing expenses, um, dining expenses, um, just the cost that, it, that is allocated towards um, yourself, uh, especially for your cost of living. Uh, so throughout all the cities in the United States, um, Cleveland is actually ranked number 16 when it comes to 
the city at the lowest cost of living. So that's something that's really important as we talk about just um, expenses. Another thing uh, that's really crucial for us in Cleveland is a concept that we have integrated into our academics. It's uh, something that we call engaged learning. So engaged learning essentially means is that it's not just, um, as I mentioned, um, strong academics. Uh, we're a tier one university for engineering. We're AACSB accredited for School of Business. But it's also giving opportunities for students to once again, develop their robust profile so that should they look for internships while they're current students or should they look to um, you know, have those OPT placements post graduations that our students are, I would say, targeted first. So every year we have about 3,000 plus students that are currently pursuing internships or co-ops um, every single year. And that's something that's really important that we basically you know, take responsibility for to ensure that students you know, are highly sought after. Um, later on the slide, um, you'll actually see a map of, of uh, campus and how it looks like. But just to give you a little bit of a uh, visual, um, I guess, uh, perspective, we're located in downtown, um, in downtown Cleveland. Uh, and what that generally means is that you, know, you don't have to drive 20 minutes, 30 minutes, or for an hour to get uh, to downtown. We're actually in downtown. So a lot of my students take the public transportation to various internships um, or even just to a commute. So it, it's very, I would say, a commuter-friendly city. So listed here are some of the partnerships that we have, some of our collaborations, as well as some of the placements that a lot of my students find, um, uh, whether they're current students or post-graduation. And, and some of these companies, you know, they should kind of stand out to you, whether you know, Amazon, Honda, Sherman Williams, uh, Chase Bank, uh, for a lot of MIS students, um, Goodrich for tires, for engineering, et cetera. Uh, we also have a partnership uh, with an organization called the Greater Cleveland Partnership. So this is actually comprised of all the businesses in Cleveland. Um, essentially what that means for you as a student is that should any positions open up, um, that partnership actually reaches out to career services um, along with career services, the various uh, colleges that are part of a university. And uh, students are given a really high priority, uh, CSU students in general, are given high priority and first come um, access to those opportunities that do open up. So once again, that's something that we like to um, constantly uh, always increase and give access to for our students is to make sure that they are um, work-ready graduates uh, post-graduation as well. So this is a little bit about the campus. Uh, one of the things that I think, uh, and it's something I would say, it's more crucial for undergraduate students to get that um, American student experience. But I also think it's really important for graduate students as well. That's some of the things that really kind of um, embraces your overall, uh, I would say, uh, well-being, as well as what kind of opportunities you have post-graduation as well. Uh, when you're a student, one of the things to always think about is networking, as well as growing your networking base. That's something that I hope you have all done in your previous university capacity, or if you're currently working, same thing as well. When you come to the US, it's, all, it's always really important to always expand your network whether it's with your professors, your fellow uh, classmates. Uh, as you all know, a lot of um, American students, domestic students, uh, they don't quit their job when they're also studying full time. Uh, they're also working full time. I had a student who was actually able to secure an internship um, through one of her classmates. So once again, look out for ways to improve and expand on your network. Uh, and I'll talk a little bit more about our career services later on. Um, but besides those professional networks, uh, we also have 200 student organizations that are not just academic um, and social clubs, but they're also um, a lot of related um, to professional networks as well as community service, uh, which I will highlight in the next slide. Uh, one thing really unique to uh, CSU is that all the buildings are actually connected uh, through a walkway passageway. So let's say it's raining outside, it's you know heavy rain and you don't want to go outside or you know let's say there's snow and you don't want to uh, to a different classroom, not a problem. You can go have to physically be.
happens that um, a lot of my students, uh, in particular in India, uh, actually join. So I always see a lot of my students really actively engaged in, in, that, in, in these uh, organizations uh, from SGA. Uh, if you look at the first one, actually, uh, my favorite one is actually, you know, we actually have our own CSU cricket organization. So a little fun fact, uh, I think the love of cricket is slowly growing in the United States. Uh, I was always a baseball fan myself, but I've actually now fully embraced cricket, learned about wicked, learned about outs and all of that for my students as well. So one thing great about it is that, you know, you're not just um, leaving home and then being into a whole new community, a whole new surroundings. Uh, we want you to embrace the American culture, but also share your own culture. Um, that's a great way to also expand on your network. Uh, one of my other favorite organizations is actually the Society of Women Engineers, um, part of SGA. Uh, I'm a little bit biased, but I just love this organization. Um, so if you are on the call and you're a female student uh, pursuing um, anything in engineering, whether it's computer science, civil, mechanical, electrical, uh, this is a great organization to join uh, itself. They do a lot of professor, um, professional mentorships with a lot of um, uh, current working female um, mentors. So uh, to give an example, uh, you might be paired up with a mentor, you know, um, in your related field. You can always you know, do like um, job shadowing and they can help with referral letters, references and things like that. So great ways to once again, always get connected. And uh, the rest of us, you know, organizations, mechanical, chemical, robotics, um, machine learning, all the above. Uh, so great ways for you to, once again, always expand on your network. Okay. Uh, this is a map of campus, as I mentioned. Uh, and once again, all these buildings are connected. And if you just go, let's say, a two-minute walk, then you're in downtown. Once again, downtown stretches for miles uh, or uh, kilometers. And uh, it's just really right in your, in your grasp. Um, should you not want to walk around, don't worry. There's you know, public buses all, all over the city. Um, so I'm going to talk a little bit about our, our uh, graduate courses and the ones that I mentioned that I'm going to target are actually some of our STEM designated degree offerings. As I mentioned STEM before, uh, science, technology, engineering, mathematics. Essentially what STEM designated degrees offers for students, whether, and once again, this could be whether you're a UMass Boston student or a student at a different university or even CSU, it's the same thing in the United States. Uh, if you graduate with a STEM designated degree, uh, post-graduation, you have the opportunity to work up to three years should you wish. So other students who graduate with a non-STEM degree, let's say in theater or in the arts, um, they're limited to a one-year OPT before they have to uh, hopefully secure an H1B or go for their PhD. You all have more opportunities, um, once again, to have that full-time employment post-graduation. So once again, from one to three years is the opportunity that STEM designated students um, have. So some of the courses um, I'm gonna actually talk about today uh, one is uh, our MIS course, Master of Information Systems, which is through a College of Business. Um, the other ones are engineering uh, courses and programs that are obviously sponsored through our College of Engineering. So I'll talk about computer science, engineering mechanics, software engineering, electrical engineering, civil engineering, mechanical engineering, environmental engineering, biomedical and chemical. As I had some alpha, <laughs> a lot of engineering uh, programs as you can see here as well. Um, so this is just for uh, any, of you, any of you out there who have not yet applied uh, and you want to know, well, do I qualify for entry in? So I'm going to cover the minimum requirements um, that is acceptable for us um, at the university, as well as the missions and, uh, and the College of Engineering, as well as College of uh, uh, Business. So if you, look, if you have an IELTS score, uh, minimum, we need to have at least a 6.0, uh, no part below 5.0. So each section should not be below 5, overall 6. If you have taken a TOEFL exam, um, looking for about a 78, you no know, part below 17. I know that there are lots of restrictions and closures when it comes to exam placements and test centers. So we have also um, are accepting two other online assessment um, exams. One is called the ITEP, stands for International Testing for English Placement. Uh, so for that, uh, overall score of 3.8. Uh, also Duolingo, which is quite popular in India as well. Uh, we're looking for a score of 100. So should you have these um, English entry requirements along with the GPA, which I'll talk about next, um, and you don't have, and if you do not have a uh, GRE criteria tied to your major, then you'll be a miss of it. So let's talk about G, uh, GPA uh, or CG percentage, et cetera. So on a safe bet, uh, if you have a 6.5 out of 10, or if you have a 55 out of 10, then those are the minimum scores uh, for a mission. So once again, then you're good to go. You can apply. For example, below, 
maybe you are a 6 point or, or a 6.3, should you have graduated from a tier one or tier two, or what we call a nursery ranking one or two university, um, then uh, once again, you can see here the difference. Uh, we're, we will be accepting up to minimum scores of six out of 10 for students graduated from a tier one or a tier two university. Uh, for uh, uh, percentages, uh, same. Great, you're good to go. If you maybe fell a little bit short, maybe 51, 52, 50, et cetera, or even 50, um, but you graduated from a tier one or tier two university, then once again, minimum requirements will be 50 out of 100. So that's just a little bit for you to know. Uh, most students that I talk to will always ask, well, sir, I don't know if my university is a tier one or tier two university. <laughs> no worries, not a problem at all. Um, you can work with your counselors, you know, they can contact um, us and our admissions team, and then we can let you know as well. Um, should that university fall under which category. Uh, one thing to know is that uh, we only accept 16 years education. Uh, three years degrees are not uh, considered equivalent. Um, and further, we do not have a backlog criteria. So should you have you know, 8, 10, 15, et cetera, backlogs uh, previously, uh, uh, still eligible to apply. I'll just talk a little bit more on the next few slides when I go. Andrew, over. sorry to uh, interrupt you. I think that- oh, sure, not a problem struggling to hear i think some audio need to yeah okay can you hear me now i i'm not sure what's the issue but we can hear you but i think okay yeah closer get probably able to get closer to the mic for a few minutes thank you sure yeah uh once again with technology you can always notice i get some some bumps i uh, hope you can all uh hear me uh, but I'll, I'll cover um, uh, regardless uh, scholarships when I go over the tuition cost as well. Uh, this is just a little bit of some information about our, our College of Business. So one thing to note is that when you are looking to pursue any, with, you know, MBA or MIS, etc. One thing to note is that you should always be targeting universities that have that AACSB accreditation. Um, I know UMass Boston has that, um, same thing for CSU, you know, all the universities, the Harvard, Yale, Stanford, et cetera, they also are accredited. And only 5% of business schools in the world have that accreditation. Uh, and that really is a high uh, achievement as well as a high mark of excellence when it comes to academics as well as placements for students. So, um, and further, if you are a business student, some of the opportunities that you will have at CSU will be our on-site recruitment. Um, we'll have access to, um, uh, I guess, I guess uh, networking with our College of Business uh, faculty and staff for other internships, uh, co-ops, uh, opportunities. We have numerous career fairs as well throughout the year. Uh, this is a little bit of, uh, for any of you out there, just a little bit of a uh, tuition cost assessment. So when you look into um, just majors in the United States, um, a lot of majors have two kind of tracks. One is a thesis and the other is a non-thesis. Uh, Those of you are normally for a non-thesis program, a student will generally take one or two classes more. Uh, in a thesis program, they will take one or two classes less. Uh, for thesis, it's more for students who are looking to eventually pursue their PhD uh, after they graduate, after they work experience. A lot of students, once again, are delicate to pursue their PhD. Um, a thesis track will essentially have more research than a non-thesis track. Okay. Uh, if you're looking to just you know, graduate uh, and then start entering the workforce right away, and that's basically you don't want to pursue a PhD afterwards, then that's where you see a lot of students pursuing more of a non-thesis track. Um, so to give an estimate about for fall tuition, um, tuition cost for the MIS program will be $10,550. Uh, this is just for your tuition. Uh, one thing great for you to know is that the GMAT and GRE, uh, GRE will be waived off for admission in. So if you have it, great, fantastic, um, but it will not be a requirement for your um, application. Okay. And listed on the right, total estimated tuition. Um, this is what I've broken down uh, from a uh, cost by credit analysis on what it will generally cost for a student to graduate all in uh, for the degree. So if you're looking to pursue a thesis track, um, then you're looking to pay a little bit less than 36,000 for your degree. If you're looking for a not thesis track, you're looking to pay a little over 38,000. 
uh, College of Engineering. Um, so um, generally when I travel around Hyderabad um, and to Chennai, and I've been there um, numerous times, love, love the Hyderabad, uh, Hyderabad brownie. Uh, one of the things that I know a lot of students um, are looking to pursue is computer science. So I'll talk a little bit about that. But one thing I just want to just highlight about College of Engineering is just the access that you have as a student. Um, as I talked about our concept of engaged learning, you know, having those open um, office hours with professors, having those research opportunities for our students, those are really key components that really makes it ideal for our students to graduate as well as study at CSU because that's what employers are looking for. They know that students that graduate uh, from CSU have those hands-on experimental and practical experience that um, are really crucial for them, especially as, as they're looking to hire uh, what we call ready-to-go engineers. Um, on this slide, and uh, I hope the numbers don't uh, jump all out at you and scare you all off, uh, this is uh, just a way for me to kind of break down exactly what the calls are all in one shot to give you more clarity. So uh, if you look over here for the GRE, you can notice that um, all the way down to environmental engineering. So if you're looking to pursue one of these degrees, um, GRE is not required. Uh, there are only two requirements. Uh, one would be for biomedical engineering and the other would be for chemical engineering. So if you're looking to pursue a degree in biomedical engineering or chemical engineering, um, for biomedical uh, minimum, a quant score we are looking for is the 70 percentile and analytical writing 3.5. This is once again the bare minimum. A lot of students, whether it's American or international students, submit actual higher scores. So once again, a little bit less flexibility if you have a score less than that. Uh, chemical engineering, uh, quant score, looking for 80th percentile, and analytical writing 3.5 as well. Okay. And you can see for all the engineering tuition costs, uh, it's all the same uh, for your first semester. 9,980. Um, your overall tuition cost obviously will fluctuate depending on what major you're looking to pursue. Uh, every major has different number of credits, hence the range of tuition. Uh, computer science, which I think is one of the most popular majors uh, from Hyderabad as well as Chennai, you're looking to pay uh, tuition costs a little bit less than 33,000. So one of the things I think I talked about before was about scholarships. So we have obviously scholarships. Uh, we had it for the summer, we had it for fall, had it for spring, et cetera. Um, for fall, it, there I would say is a range. Um, it can be anywhere from zero to 2,000. Uh, it really depends on your overall profile of that student. Um, so the scholarship process uh, would be that you would apply to the university, you'll receive what's called a conditional offer letter. Um, then your counselors at ASIN can reach out to us. We have direct communications with ASIN and counselors here. Uh, and they will request on your behalf a scholarship. And then our faculty and, and advisors will allocate X number of uh, monetary value towards yourself for your uh, tuition um, scholarship. One of the things that I think is really crucial to know is your overall tuition cost. Um, a lot of students that I, that I meet with, um, they usually will tell me, you know, Andrew, um, I apply to this or X university, and that university is offering me $5,000 scholarship or even $10,000 scholarship. Can you offer more? And one of the things that I always ask um, the students, and something I always advise students, is to always look at your overall total tuition. Um, the average cost for an MS uh, in any engineering track or even MIS track, uh, you're looking for around... I will say average 45, 50, 60,000 plus. Uh, I had a student that I, was, that I talked to um, a few weeks ago who applied to University of New York and their computer science degree was about 60,000 for the whole degree. So even though they were given a scholarship of 10,000, it only uh, brought down the tuition cost to 50,000. And off the bat in computer science, it's less than 33,000 for a tier one university. So one of the great thing about CSU is that every year, uh, this is for all universities, um, uh, from a fiscal year, every university receives funding. Uh, for us at CSU, it's broken down into uh, three main categories. One is for more opportunities for, uh, for students, and that's through career services. So more webinars, more career fairs, all those opportunities for students to get that active career services engagement. So X amount of, of or third of our budget is allocated for that. Another uh, component of our budget is allocated to um, enhancing more research opportunities for students on campus. Um, so once again, further building up on the, on the classrooms, the research facilities, et cetera. 
And the third main criteria for us is that a lot of the funding goes, gets filtered back to the university's um, admission as well as college's department to ensure that tuition costs are affordable for all students. And that's one thing that's really important for CSU is to make sure that students are able to afford you know, high quality education. And then once they graduate, not be in this huge hole of debt for them to pay off any education loans or um, any loans that they procure. So that's one thing really important for us at CSU, which is also a really benefit for you all. So for our uh, fall applications, uh, application deadlines are um, July 21st and then classes beginning on the 17th. Uh, your counselors at Asian, uh, they're quite familiar with our, uh, our admissions process, what documents we're looking for, everything to submit. So no issues there. Uh, just work really closely with your counselors and they'll help ensure that, you are, uh, that your application is quickly processed. And that's the end of my presentation. Hi everyone, just to turn on my video. Hi guys. Yeah. So, hello, so good to see you. Thanks for having us again. So my name is Julie and I'm the program manager for the University of Massachusetts, Boston. So happy to guide you through the, um, uh, the programs that we offer if you're postgraduate students and you're still looking for the fall intake or the spring intake next year, as well as, you know, if there are any undergraduate students. So please, you know, feel free to uh, send your um, questions, okay? So we will address them at the end of my presentation because my presentation is mainly for the postgrad, okay? Right, guys, I just stop my video for a moment and share my screen with you, okay? So I'm sure you've probably heard about the University of Massachusetts, or UMB, right? So, um, can you see my screen, right? Yes, we can, uh, Julia, we can see your screen. Yeah, beautiful. Thank you so much. So welcome to uh, welcome to UMass, University of Massachusetts, Boston, because in the in the capital of education for international students as well as the American students. So Boston is a dream city, is a very prestigious place to study, to live, to work. Um, University of Massachusetts, Boston, and that's the um, the, cap, uh, the the view of the of the campus is just along the beautiful Boston Harbor. It's a um, top public research university in Boston, just five minutes to downtown Boston. And it's um, the most diverse uh, university in, in New England. Yeah, that's the area where the, um, uh, where the Boston is and the Massachusetts is. Um, just, you know, talking about the school size, we are like a mid-sized school and our location is obviously urban, so we won't go wrong. And it's a, again, great city, one of the, you know, biggest cities in the US. Um, so the, uh, you know, the sports uh, that we have, we have, you know, national um, uh, athlete athletics is a division three. And as well as, you know, we have about 16,000 students on campus, uh, both undergraduate and postgraduate. And uh, uh, it's 16 to one student faculty ratio. So it's a nationally recognized um, model. It's a nationally recognized university, accredited university. It's a... Uh, you know, a good example, a model, model of excellence, uh, uh, you know, talking about the urban, uh, urban public research university and UMass Boston is the most, again, diverse university, uh, research university in the Northeast. So that means that, you know, we have many international students uh, on campus and doing the programs. So just again, you know, if you look at the university at the glance, so some of the, um, numbers some you know important figures that i would like to share with you guys right and some things that i would like to emphasize if you are choosing uh, right now where to apply where to go if you're holding offers from other university so of course you know with the umass boston as a public university you'll get uh, you'll get a lot of engagement and accessibility to the faculty right this is an important thing 16 to 1 student the faculty ratio if you are postgraduate student or master's degree student, right? So it gives you a, a very good accessibility to the, to the faculty. And if you're looking for their assistantship, like graduate assistantship, teaching assistantship, or the PhD program to start after your master's, so UMB 
is exactly the right place, the right school to, to choose from and to do that. So we have top rank programs and um, uh, in business, computer science, business analytics, like science programs. So UMass has about 10, uh, has 10 colleges and more than 150 undergraduate and graduate courses of study. So uh, top rank programs, again, it's uh, business, public policies, computer science, business analytics, information technology. So, and Princeton Review has repeatedly recognized us that uh, they're being uh, the, the university, the universities that the best in the Northeast of the United States. So we have one of the best MBAs program in the North America. So it's in top 50 best programs, as well as a, a mass and accounting program uh, by the um, uh, Financial Engineer Times. So it's also ranked in the top 50 programs in the United States. So. U.S. Global University ranking um, for our MBA program, and again, number 41 in North America across U.S. and Canada. Um, our graduate degrees in particular are ranked super, super high in terms of, you know, placement and their salaries after the graduation. So I'll show you some statistics later on for our computer science graduates for, as well as, you know, our business analytics and uh, finance specialists. They have a great placement in, within the top companies in Boston, uh, top business finance companies in the Boston area. There's again, you, you must be in a recognized and a well-known university, a tier one university in the United States has an amazing networking connection with them, companies across the um, across Boston and the Boston area. So it's a multicultural community, right? If you're coming like obviously because you're an international student, you're coming from overseas, maybe it's your first time. So you need to find the, the things that you like, the place that you like. Again, Boston, you won't go wrong. It's, um, you know, the University of Massachusetts, Boston, it's an exceptionally diverse student population. And uh, we have students from 140 different countries. And it's a very, very collaborative and friendly environment for you guys. And you will enjoy Enjoy Boston and full, I promise you, because um, the university is located just on the Boston Harbor and it's a stunning oceanfront campus uh, view that gives you, like, you know, direct access to downtown Boston. It's only five minutes. And Boston is a home to a rich and vibrant culture and in one of the nation's strongest economies. It's roughly 500 companies recruit on campus, offering you must Boston's like, you know, the most talented students, the opportunity to work for some of the world's world top employers in the industries, uh, ranging from finance and technology to healthcare, education, and uh, well, engineering, basically. So, um, now I'll guide you through the uh, programs that we have got. So I'll speak about six programs that we offer. So these are the programs are the, uh, that we offer within the College of Management. And these are the programs that are still open for the admission for fall 2020 intake as well as for spring 2021. So you're welcome to submit your application through as an um, uh, consultancy. So uh, these are the five programs that we offer through, uh, through the College of Management. Uh, uh, MS in Business Analytics, uh, it's a STEM approved degree, 30 credits program, it's approximately one and a half years. So each of the program, it's 30 credits, 10 courses. So it's about uh, it's about one and a half uh, years, like three semesters for you to complete the degree will be pretty much enough. So uh, a mess in accounting, finance, again, STEM approved degree, information technology and MIT, uh, STEM approved degree, uh, MBA, uh, business administration is the only program that has 36, uh, 36 credits and it's a one year flex MBA how we call it and you can choose up to one calendar year it's again like three semesters one calendar year uh, and you can choose up to two specializations from the below list of about like 12 10 specialization that we have, right? Something in digital marketing or supply chain and service management is very very I think you know the trendy and a promising major to study uh, because you know look at the COVID situation right many companies have been trying to find the alternative ways to supply goods and you know to review their uh, their customer services uh, management um, um, uh, well their customer services scheme right what they do and it's I think you know there are many things that you can benefit from MBA is a general is a business degree that will help you know secure your um, uh, 
like a medium level per, uh, management position. So this MBA does not require a work, work experience. So it could be, you know, very well a, a, a good uh, suit for someone who just graduated and maybe, you know, worked for a couple of years or just done some internship, but you're interested in doing something uh, like a bit in business. So maybe, you know, setting up your own company or join a, a big corporation, right? And do something within their business development. So yeah, these are the progr programs and, um, you can see that the three programs that are STEM approved, STEM means science, technology, engineering, mathematics, I believe Andrew has, has mentioned that, right? And it's only, you know, STEM or non-STEM, it's just, you know, for your stay back in the US after you've completed your degree. So if you are doing MBA program, which is not a STEM degree major, so you will still have about 12 months to stay in the US to do your practical training, right? Your OPT. But for the STEM majors, so students can have uh, up to, uh, stay back up to 36 months so 12 months plus 24 month extension right so moving to the next one and it's a very very popular program i have many many students and like i think andrew was uh, talking about cleveland state university is also home to many students so as well like you know in boston computer science we have um, um, uh, many many students from south asia who are interested in you know completing masters and science a master of science in computer science uh, it's a stem approved degree uh, we have an outstanding curriculum very very good curriculum so it's uh, you can just you know if you're interested in the courses that you will be studying like the core subjects and electives so you can just always uh, visit the UM, uh, University of Massachusetts Boston website and pull out the curriculum so you have a clear idea of the uh, of the um, of the courses of the uh, you know your degree structure your curriculum like machine learning artificial intelligence and some other courses that are traditionally included in the computer science major right so and also you have an option to go with either with a capstone project that they end of your third semester a capstone project it's actually you know it will help you and bring you to you know to the same room with your potential employer right it's like where you do a uh, you are given a task to complete like within your final semester you're given a, some data by the company it's a real company is a partnership uh, that has a partnership with the University of Massachusetts Boston and they give you the data and they give you a problem and you know to find the solution and present it to them so and that you can potentially you know be employed by the company because you're doing the project for them as well as you're keen on more you know research that's fine as well you can propose a research topic so there is an option for that as well in this program so yeah, like computer science, your professional career in software development, pretty much, right? And I think, you know, again, the main like goal for many students, apart from research, so you guys want to practice, right? You want to uh, top up your experience that you already have, or probably you didn't have an in there, but then, you know, you want to definitely have this experience in the United States. So to explore more, so to uh, start building your new networking connections with the companies. And again, Boston and UMass is the right place. So so top techno technology companies in Boston, just some examples, those that come to the university and recruit our students. And also I would like to pay attention, you know, to the average salaries that our students get. And so graduate salaries in the computer science field for our graduates are about more than 100,000 a year. So that's again, you know, you can always double check this on the pay scale or um, uh, Glassdoor, uh, there are a couple of resources where you can just, you know, see the salaries available in your, in your field by, you know, different, uh, well, but, but within the different area in the United States. So, um, talking about like, you know, entry requirements. So I'm um, just, again, like I said, you know, the admission is still open. You have time pretty much until like July 1st, but that's the the very last date when you are, you know, you are, you can submit your application as well as, you know, pay the deposit and start processing UI20. So for the fall 2020 intake. So these are the entry requirements and with the College of um, uh, Management and College of Computer Science. So if you are, uh, your grades are on the 100, uh, 100 point scale, right? So we need to at least have, you know, we look at at least 55 out of 100, right? So this is for section one, section two universities. This, this is the quality 
classification that we're referring to based on the, you know, like uh, some associations that are dealing with the overseas qualification, like NUSA for Australian, uh, also the you know, Australian universities use the same uh, kind of guidelines. So, but the US, I, was, I would say in general, 6.5 out of 10, right, or five, 55 out of 100 if you apply for the uh, College of Computer Science. And if you apply for the College of Management, so 57 out of 100 and 6.75 6 out of 10. So these are like the, the minimum criteria. So we will be looking at your transcripts, right? We'll also be looking at your GRE and GMAT or GMAT exam, exam, either one would work. So for the College of Computer Science GRE, uh, we need 306 and 155 on the quants part specifically for computer science. They're very, very particular, right? 155 quants and 306 overall. So College of Management, like Business Analytics, MBA, Finance majors, 306. Uh, uh, overall GRE. And if you guys have a, you know, high GPA, like 3.2 out of 4 on an uh, American scale GPA, uh, then, or if you have work experience five years plus, so GRE can be waived off for the College of Management. But College of Computer Science, Computer Science major, GRE is required. All right. So I'll just move to the next slide again. You know, you can always double check with us or with your counselors if, if you are eligible, right? So we can help you and guide you through this. So these are just, you know, the English uh, test requirements because like the three pillars that you need to provide, you need to be ready with, right? So there's three main criteria, like three main uh, parts of the documents when you apply or when you consider the university. Your CGPA, that's important, right? Percentage or the CGPA on a 10 point scale, like 100 point scale or you know four point scale seven point scale we are quite aware that there are like about 700 universities in india right and there are different grading scales so we will take care of that as well so and then again you know you have always um expert you know experts from as a consultant so that they can talk to you and help you through the your, your program and the university correctly in accordance with your gpa because cgp is the key it's very important for you when you choose your school right and then English proficiency test, because we are an international student, so we need to provide an English proficiency test. It could be TOEFL, it could be IELTS, it could be ITEP, it could be PTE, it could be a dual lingua test, right? Different tests are acceptable, so the university can give you flexibility. So you can either register if you have tests within the it's valid, TOEFL and IELTS, so you can submit them. And GRE and GMA, they are, you know, can be waived for the College of Management and Business majors uh, if you have a work experience of five years or if you have a high CGPA, right, about 3.0, 3.2 out of four. Okay, so we do the GRE and GMA waivers. All right, so and computer science. So for computer science. Um, um, program and computers, College of Mathematics and Computer Science. So CGPA again, pretty much, you know, your CGPA guys, it's the key. So American um, um, graduate admission is quite competitive when it comes to the CGPA. So usually universities require like 3.0, but minimum like 2.7 sometimes, right? It depends on the school. So that's why, you know, your eligibility will be pretty much predetermined on your CGPA as well as like if you have a GRE or GMAT exam. Them, and then the English proficiency test. So for the College of Computer Science, I would just, you know, uh, I would just underline that, you know, the IELTS that is required is 6.0, while for the College of Management is 6.5, right? So for the Computer Science Specialist uh, requirement test. Okay, so moving to the next one right so and that's the second part of your uh, application right say right when you apply for the university also as a postgraduate student even though like you know the work experience is not required but if you have it that's good to have your resume your cv right so to put your work experience or if you've done you know some interesting projects or internships so when it's not required it's only an additional benefit right to kind of present yourself to the um, admission uh, admission team, admission committee uh, of, uh, you know, university that you've, that you're applying for, the University of Massachusetts, Boston, in our case, right? Statement of purpose, also quite an important part because that's where you describe your, uh, your goals, right? Your academic goals as well as your professional goals. If you are 
looking for something more practically focused, if you're looking at something like research-based, right? So that should be described in your statement of purpose. And letter of uh, recommendation is usually two required. One could be from your academic advisor. Um, the other one could be from your direct supervisor if you've done an internship or if you've done any work experience, right? So, and qualifying degrees usually, you know, for the College of Management, it could be any. Even if you've done the Bachelor of uh, uh, Home, Bachelor of Commerce, three year degree, or 15 years of education, we can, you know, assess your application basically because usually American universities require 16 years of, of education like, you know, four-year undergraduate degree in any discipline, but, you know, like a three-year degree could be considered on a case-by-case -case basis. All right, so talking about the cost, right, and the classes, when the classes start in the fall. So, well, again, talking about this fall intake, that is August, and the classes start on August 25th. Um, and uh, I think like Andrew pretty much, you know, he's explained it very well so that the universities will uh, will reopen because there will be definitely some student, domestic students, American students or international students who are in the United States or some countries where students can travel to the United States. So that is why the classes, as, as of now, the, the classes are planned on campus. So I think the final decision hasn't been taken yet by the University of Massachusetts, Boston about you know, offering online classes. We will probably get to know about this in June, but as of now, the classes are planned on campus, right? So, and if you're applying for the College of Management or College of Computers, like Computer Science and Mathematics, so this is person Master, your tuition fees, right? It's given like it's around nine credits. Uh, you are paying for the nine credits. And if you are looking for the cost per, for credits, it's so $1,518. And pretty much every program is a 30 credits program, about 10 courses, except for MBA, that is a 36 credit program. And the last, I think, great news, you know, the, the, the best for, uh, for, for, you know, for the end. So it's a scholarship, of course. So scholarships as a public research university, UMB does have scholarship for the graduate students. So uh, if you're still, you know, looking for the admission or if you already applied and you've got the admission letter, so you can, you know, request your counselor to submit a scholarship request and there is a scholarship opportunity for up to four thousand dollars right so it's a four thousand dollars for your complete degree for one and a half years of so 30 credits right uh that will bring you tuition cost i think but a very very affordable price given that you know the university accreditation and the status and the ranking and then you know opportunities after graduation so for up to four thousand dollars for their complete degree right so, but the scholarship usually has the earlier deadline, like, you know, your deadline for the application, the very last, you know, the extended deadline will be like July 1st, but scholarship usually, you know, have the deadline earlier than that. So I would suggest, you know, you always double check with your counselors that they can check with the universities also, which scholarships are available. At the moment with UMass, we still have the scholarship opportunity for you guys. So, that is why, you know, just to sum it up, why the University of Massachusetts, Boston, so there are so many universities in the United States, like, you know, again, as Cleveland CSU is a brilliant option, is a very affordable. University of Massachusetts, Boston will be, you know, with a little bit higher cost. But again, with the scholarship, it's make it, it makes it very affordable, and you will be just in the you know in the heart of the big city, Boston, which is the capital of education, capital to many many companies from the Fortune 500 list, and it will bring you you know to already like a, you know a level higher once you've graduated. So the average salaries for our College of Management students are all about like you know 100,000 per annum. It's higher than the average. US salary and it's given like again you know the networking opportunities and support from the universities that you will have in terms of your career preparation wise. Um, more than welcome to apply again and you know happy to answer your questions then. So I'll pause it here and stop sharing my slide and I'll open it to Q&A. Thank, Thank you so much uh, Julia. Uh, I think Andrew's picked up most of the questions, but I have a couple of them for you as well. Uh, so one of the students, Ayush, is asking, can we still apply to UMass Boston uh, if we have a lower GRE score? You want to take that, Julia? Uh, 
Um, yeah, sure, definitely. So I would, you know, I, I, I would need some clarity on that, guys, because depends on your program, right? And uh, depends on your CGPA. Because like I said, you know, if you're applying for the College of Management, well, for the uh, Business Analytics or Finance or MBA program, we can just wave off the GRE based on your, you know, your CGPA, if it's high enough. It's like 3.2 out of 4, we're looking at or if you have a five years of work experience, right? These are only two criteria and only for college of management. So for computer science, if you have GRE below 306, I would not encourage you to apply. I would encourage you to either retake GRE or, you know, apply it, you know, for some other universities if you are looking for the for the upcoming intake because, you know, it most probably be a reject. So 306, and one for 55 on the quant part, so for computer science. But for business, yes, if it's a high GPA or a work experience, here you can be way more. Thank you, Julia. Um, I, for benefit of others, those who have not read the questions, uh, Andrew from uh, CSU has answered uh, a lot of questions in the Q&A tab, uh, but I might just uh, read a few so that while others are typing their questions, we'll answer them all live, um, uh, since Julia is also available now. Um, now, Julia, do you have a view on uh, one of the students asking, uh, given the situation right now, is it worth applying? Uh, and uh, uh, what, what's the situation of part-time job? I'm combining multiple questions to take your views on that. Yeah, absolutely, guys. And I, th I think is, you know, to keep it like to give you a short answer, yes, because the time to apply is now. Like, imagine if you delay your admission to the next year. No one. Uh, no one exactly knows what will be happening, right? So what the scenario of this COVID-19 uh, COVID will be. So, uh, but I think, you know, definitely is there, you know, if it's a recession, that's a, still a short term, like a short term recession due to the health, um, healthcare, health issue problems, right? So it's a pandemic recession, it's not a traditional recession. So recovery will be quick, right? Vaccine will be invented. So, and uh, definitely, you know, next year the situation will not be the same, right? But then imagine if you delay your admission to the next year when universities right now they're in position so that they are welcoming students to apply. Universities actually saying like, you know, we want you to apply. Because next year we will have a new applicants who graduate and, you know, this year and then next year they will be applying plus those ones who miss their, their intakes from, you know, in 2020. So my suggestion is definitely yes, apply right now because when you apply, you're already like, you know, preset, you're already kind of, you know, half step ready, half step, you know, to, towards your degree, towards your completion of your degree as well, right? So some universities like, you know, Cleveland State, they offer an online semester. So one semester being in the home country, you can do still, you know, you can be still employed doing a, you know, freelance or part-time job and so, you know, doing this in parallel, completing your, you, you know, you, 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 you as degree of first semester and doing the job and then transfer those credits and continue on campus. And then you can be still eligible for CPD. I think we're just waiting for the government, like, you know, the confirmation on the next steps about the CPD eligibility, but it's, I feel like, you know, I think that's a pretty positive feedback Fact that the students who even do the online semester so they still be eligible for, for the CPTs where it's yet to be confirmed but I think you just need to analyze you just need to you know listen to them uh, to you know to well to listen to observe what's happening listening obviously to the news talk to the experts attend the events but definitely apply you can always defer right so it's your it's your right as an as an international student once you've applied you can defer your program if you're not able to travel it's up to one academic year and deferral is like you know you can do only one deferral right once you've been admitted but it just makes it easier for you you know to then finalize your plan so i would say definitely take it as a, a an opportunity rather than a, a you know challenge or you know disadvantage these days thank you julia um just just to expand on that, uh, while the COVID situation is worrisome, generally speaking, that does not differ uh, anybody's plans of studying abroad. Uh, this is pretty much going to be part of our lives anyway. In probably in a few weeks' time, things will start simmer down. Um, in case you're still getting worried, your families are getting worried, you still have an option to defer it. But the idea is if you're intending to study abroad, uh, fall or the August intake is when you should start applying. 
have the admission in hand so that you also have clarity in terms of the plan of action over the next few days. Some of you might be applying for bank loans and other things. So you can initiate the process and keep things ready. So in case you got to go in January, there's very less time uh, after the fall intake to, before the January start. So this admission and having an offer in hand will always save a lot of time for you. You can finish everything quickly and rather than rushing at the last minute, you can uh, do everything peacefully and take things uh, according to that. So that should be a plan of action. So given the current situation, don't get unnecessarily panicked. Of course, we have to be careful. Everybody will be careful. Universities will be exceptionally cautious in terms of how they're taking care of the students arriving. And at ascent also, we are also advising students on taking all the possible precautions and other things. But realistically speaking, as in, is there anything somebody can do to avoid the current situation? I don't think we can, other than washing our hands and tying a mask on our face. So we have to live with this and uh, move on with lives in terms rather than differing plans and uh, wasting or losing any time. Some of you would be graduating this year. You don't want to lose an academic year and waste a lot of time on that. So your plan of action should be status quo. Keep doing things as they go. And when the visa slots open, you apply for a visa. And if things don't work to plan, you can always defer it to the next intake. There's no major issue about it. Contact a counselor at ascent and they'll advise you on further course of action. Do not stop applying. That's the basic advice. Keep applying, get the admissions, keep the offers handy. Any other questions any of you have, you can still type in the Q&A box and we'll try to answer all of them. Somebody was asking, when does the spring intake start? Applications start from October. Andrew's already answered that. Tier 1 University, South India, you have Anna University, Usmania University, Jain2 University. All these are Tier 1 Universities. These are, according to what they call this NUSA guide, multiple countries follow this list in terms of listing. So most of the popular universities are on tier one. So you need not worry unless you studied at a private or some other university, you might have to check that. But uh, counselors at Ascent will always be able to check your listing of the university and uh, advise you on application process. Any other questions? The address of Ascent Chennai office and Ascent Hyderabad office, besides our offices in Mumbai and in Ahmedabad are all uh, listed. We've listed predominantly we were addressing this for South India, so we listed Chennai and Hyderabad addresses. Feel free to message us or call us. We're functional in the offices also from Monday, uh, 1st of June. And uh, we are currently counseling everybody online and digitally, not that we are not functional. Uh, we'll be more than happy to answer all your questions if you have any. Julia, Andrew, any other things you wish to advise students on at this stage before we close the session? Uh, no, I mean, I actually just want to congratulate um, all the students out there virtually who are graduating this year. Uh, congratulations. Uh, I was in your shoes about, it's forever, but about 18 years ago when I graduated undergrad. So, hey, congratulations to you all. And I'm really excited for, uh, I guess, for all of you to have access to just uh, the future. Congrats again. Thank you, Andrew. Uh, Julia, uh, you have any last thoughts to share? Absolutely, yeah. I would like to thank you guys for your time. It's always, you know, precious for us to that you attend these webinars, that you ask questions. That means, you know, you are you are you are curious, right? You are you are inquiring about the options for you, and it's all about you, as like we always say, right? So there is no wrong question. So feel free to ask to reach out so if you're applying for screen intake so i think you'll still have time and pretty much like you know you can apply uh there is a question in the chat box by the way i'm just reading so the screen intake my advice would be you know apply for fall intake uh um it's a direct site for mars so apply for fall intake and then you can defer to screen intake so there is no issue right for that because now still universities are accepting the fall intake applications pretty much and so also there was a question about from an engineering student if it, with the engineering background if it's can they, can they apply for the MBA? So the, the answer is yes, you guys can apply for MBA with engineering background. So it could be any um, on, uh, uh, you know, undergraduate qualified degree, but uh, GRE or GMAT exam will be required unless again, you have a high GPA or you have a work experience for five years. So then, you know, don't change your plan. So don't, you know, don't panic, just stay tuned, okay? And take care of yourself. So hope to hear and see everyone very soon. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Julia. Thank you so much, Andrew. Uh, all the attendees, if you have any questions, take a note, take a screenshot of the addresses. Uh, 
give us a call. We're available. Even if you miss our call, our systems will track your numbers and we'll call you back first thing the next morning. Uh, but as I said, send us an email or come visit us in the offices. Uh, you will love to see our offices, as I mentioned. We have state-of-the-art IT facilities and display facilities at our offices, which most students love and enjoy. Uh, we have virtual reality center, which will give you an experience of looking at the campuses uh, in person, of course, without any ticket. So feel free to visit us and we'll be more than happy to assist you. And good luck with all your plans and those of you due for taking your exams, all the best. And we'll see you soon in our offices. I'll speak to you on the screens. Thank you, Julia. Thank you, Andrew, for your precious time today. Uh, very encouraging. And I'm sure all the participants found it useful. Thank you so much.